Norman Rockwell first came to mind when thinking about Christmas themed art, but J.C. Leindecker was suggested by the community for a master study. Several sources mention Rockwell was actually influenced by Leindecker, so this works out. The challenge, well, this is a color oil painting. How do we translate what we see here into black and white line art? In today's master study, you'll see what inking techniques I use for shading this classic Christmas scene, and five tips for problem solving. This video is kind Kindly sponsored by Skillshare and more on that later. How did I get here? For best results, I follow a workflow of five stages. For research, I already had this book. It has 225 of JC Leindecker's amazing illustrations, which I use as inspiration for his brushstroke style. The illustration we're using today I found on the web. It's a 1948 reprint from American Weekly, though I'm guessing it was painted in the 1920s. Doing a thumbnail, it helps with figuring out how to plan the shading based on the source of light. It takes 5-10 minutes of roughly blocking in the masses of values with a pencil. Doing the step right away weeds out problems that you might later encounter. For example, the Leindecker piece has two sources of light, one inside the room shining towards the viewer and one outside the room looking into the scene. The second challenge, as mentioned, well, this is an oil painting and we want to recreate it using pen and ink language while preserving the master style, which could be tricky. To problem solve that, I typically do a subject study. For example, here with this Mobius commission I'm currently working on, as you can see, similar problem. A color piece with direct light and reflected light. I did a small pen sketch to problem solve the values there, but for the line decker piece there aren't a lot of obvious strokes or contrasts like in the Mobius piece. Line decker communicates shape and form primarily with color. So instead of doing a full pencil sketch for the scene, the best approach in this situation was to prepare a values chart. The purpose of this step is to match the colors with the uh, grades of lines, so convert to grayscale with strokes, and use that as a reference guide. If you're unsure whether it's best to do a full sketch or a value chart for your chosen project, it doesn't hurt to do both. It's not a waste of time to test techniques in a practice session. It will lead to more confident execution of your final artwork. For the pencil underdrawing, after I established the contour lines and erased the construction lines, I looked at both my thumbnail and the reference to decide on stroke directions, where I might use texture or pattern, where I should put more contrast, and determine how this piece leads the viewer's eye through the picture plane. The visual focal point is the Santa and mom kissing under the mistletoe. However, they're further in the picture plane and less defined, less details. Line Decker bolded the line weights in the forefront of the scene, emphasizing the kid's reaction as the underlying narrative. At the ink application stage, I go through my mental notes. Well, essentially I go through my ultimate checklist to make sure I've addressed all potential issues, how the master made decisions about each of the art fundamentals, and I apply that information to my medium, which is pen and ink. You can download that master study checklist from my website. Oh yeah, and another step that was helpful, I traced the image to play with the line angles. And that's when I came to the conclusion that he does very little rendering. There are areas with just tone without any detail at all. The holding lines are implied with tone without the use of any contours. It was after the tracing exercise that I realized I would need to add tone in the background. I did the underdrawing in stages. Once the penciling was complete in the forefront, I inked that section. I let it dry for an hour and then I cleaned the surface of graphite with a kneaded eraser. If you add all your pencil lines at once, there's a a chance they'll smudge or fade as you work on the surface. That's why I do it in sections. This is a bristle paper with a vellum finish. I'm using an H lead for the pencils and a pigment based India ink made by Speedball which is ideal for illustration. For dip pens I went with a 512 bowl nib for the thicker lines and a soft maru Tashikawa nib for the fine lines. I've linked the complete list of supplies and other mentioned resources in the description below. If you're curious 
curious about different instruments and methods for inking illustration art, then I want to quickly share how today's sponsor can help with that, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes on a wide variety of topics for creative people like us. These past weeks, I've been going through their illustration classes. I'm taking some urban sketching and a refresher on line perspective. You could also be interested in this class by professional cartoonist Roman Muradov. He shares how he likes to experiment with ink and talks about common mistakes with solutions and has a really fun presenting style. What I especially appreciate about the platform is the autoplay feature. I just leave it on while I work and pause when I need to take notes or bookmark a class for later. I'm really excited to share this offer with you. The first 500 people will get access to 30 days free trial membership. You can explore with unlimited access by using my link in the description below. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now back to inking. When I did the values chart exercise, I noticed that the Christmas tree has the darkest values, but that's also where there's the least detail. Almost no rendering, just shapes of color. The tree basically frames the narrative by standing between the kissing couple and the kids. It needs to be dark without overpowering the composition. I debated using a brush with pure black to ink that section, but that would have ruined it. I would have agonized over this section if I hadn't first done that values chart. Thankfully, that exercise informed me on what tools to choose, as well it gave me an idea of the order for inking each section. So I save the tree for later in the project. That way I can better gauge how to harmonize the values comparatively to the rest of the composition. If things are too light, it's easier to add to than to remove it. The last thing we want is a big blotch of correctional whiteout on our artwork. For the kissing couple in the background, I switched to a smaller nib to keep the lines subtle in weight. The key for this entire section is to maintain the same tonal value throughout, meaning the lines are spaced apart evenly. We rely on line direction to explain the shapes and forms. So I'm careful to keep the same level of pressure on the nib. Even just one bold line in the wrong spot could spoil the effect. Then I made my way over to the tree decorations because they're more defined and they overlap the needle branches. Once I was satisfied with the decorations in the tree, I let the ink dry, remove the graphite, then I used the fine liner pen and a ruler for the border and the lines for the wall pillars on either side of the kids. Then I set a few pencil guidelines for the hatch marks in the background. You don't want to draw every line because that would fill the surface with graphite. Just a few lines to make sure we don't stray from the horizontal plane.
To avoid going into solid blocks, I went with a set of patterns for the wall frames. Because it's in the forefront of the picture, I switched to the bigger bull nib, gradually building tone as not to overpower with darks. This is the most fun part of the drawing, seeing how all the values fit together and putting in the final touches, bumping up some of the mid-tones and erasing the last bits of graphite. By going through these five stages, I was able to prevent potential dilemmas at the inking stage. You can execute your pen and ink projects with a lot of confidence with this simple approach. Even turn a color painting into black and white illustration. There's more to know about translating what you see into black and white liner and if that sounds interesting, watch this video next. I hope that you enjoyed this master study of JC Leyendecker recreating a lovely Christmas scene for the holiday season. If you did, please let me know by leaving a comment down below and giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and I wish you a happy time of year.